morning and welcome to this very fast edition of our show live from our studios here in uh, Nairobi. Uh, we are streaming live on our social media pages, ODM Facebook and uh, Azimio uh, Facebook, Azimio TV Facebook account. And uh, this is a very interesting topic that you're going to have today. Uh, my name is Philip Otale, uh, the Director of Communications for the ODM Party. Well, uh, one thing I want to remind you is that we had election, a general election in August last year, the 9th of August 2022. And this general election, there were so many things at stake. There were four presidential candidates. Two of these candidates were the front runners. The ODM party leader, then running as the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition presidential candidate, Honorable Raila Amolo Junior, and the Kenya Kwanza presidential candidate. Actually, he ran as Uda party presidential candidate. Dr. William Samuel Buto. Others were lawyer, Professor George Uchiri Wajakoya, and another lawyer as well, uh, Waihiga Maure. Well, the election was held, Kenyans turned out to vote as is a norm, because people usually are eager after every five year cycle, they should go back to elect new leaders into office. This time around, the president, the incumbent, President Uhuru Kenyatta, was not contested because he was constitutionally barred because he had served his two terms. So it was natural that he would support someone. He chose, out of his own wisdom, to support our party leader, the Honorable Ray Lodinga, in the context. Reasons are only known to him because he said he wants to leave Kenya in safe hands. And the question most Kenyans used to answer whenever they used to be asked that uh, in whose hands are you safe? They would respond widely and cheerfully that it's Baba. Baba is Raila Amolo Odinga. Now, as Joseph uh, Visharinovich Stalin, a Soviet Union uh, politician, former premier of the Soviet Union and a revolutionary said uh, that uh, it is not the people who vote that count, but the people who count the votes that matter. He had a reason, because being a politician, he knew very well that people can wake up very early in the morning make long queues and vote, cast their ballots and go home. They leave that polling station or polling center knowing that they have made a resolve that I want so and so to be my next president, to be my next governor, to be my next MP, senator, woman rep, or MCA. But when the counting is done, their wishes or their aspirations are dashed away just so easily like that by a few people. India is the largest democracy in the world with close to a billion voters. But believe you me, India has only three commissioners in their electoral commission. They are the chairman and two commissioners in the states where the elections are held, in the devolved units, in the Indian uh, 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 arrangement, we have electoral uh, commissions. As I would say, the electoral commission in India is devolved to the regions. And that's why we always have very smooth elections in India, despite having uh, more than uh, 600 million registered voters taking part in the election. That's why it's uh, the 
biggest democracy in the world. Now, let me not take you to so much, but I want to remind you, going by the book, the word of God, in the book of John chapter 32, when Jesus was facing the Pharisees, and the Pharisees were trying to question him on so many things, and he said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And in that perspective, as Kenyans, we have always been wanting to know the truth so that the truth can set us free. The Azimio coalition contested the presidential election to the highest court on land, that is the Supreme Court. And whatever the outcome in the Supreme Court, in their own wisdom, decided to use unpalatable words to dismiss every argument that the Azimio coalition presented before them. The most memorable word they used, or the most memorable phrase they used, was hot air. Everything that Azimio presented before them was mere hot air. That was quite unjudicial, it was quite demeaning, and a lot of people, the supporters of Azimio, did not like it. But that, that as it may, they made their ruling. Now, several months down the line, after the, the Diba call at the Bombers of Kenya, where Mr. Flaje Bukati casually walked in, and from his pocket, removed a piece of paper and read as announcement of the presidential results. Can you imagine? After Kenyans have voted, waited for five, six, seven days for the presidential results to be announced, the chairman of the body that is charged with conducting free and fair election just walks into the Bombers of Kenya auditorium and plucks a paper from his pocket in the jacket and reads quite casually that is the Kenya we live in. But as Azimio has been agitating for free, fair and verifiable elections for over the years, we believe this is a time to fix where the rain started beating us. We need to start addressing how and when can we fix this? How can it be done? And when shall it be achieved? Can we as Kenyans, can we as a country? Yes, we can. If we put in place credible men and women to run the affairs of the general election, uncompromisable men and women who can put the country first for their own self-interest. When Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free, the Pharisees continued to question him and they even almost went physical with Jesus, not knowing that they could not separate between Jesus the man and Jesus the spirit. He was speaking as God. They didn't know that. In the Kenyan context, I would say, there is a lot of you and cry. There is a lot of push and pull back and forth over this particular issue of opening the server. Because that's what the Azimir the Omojawan Kenya Coalition leadership has been talking about and agitating for the time that they in public fora and even going out to lead demonstrations in the streets. It's been a long howl. Then came the whistleblower. The whistleblower is one of the staff at the IEBC who saw it wise that I should not just sit down on this vital information that I have but I should share with the world that indeed the election was bungled. When that whistleblower presented results as were 
in the samba to the Azimio leadership. Another gentleman, a data analyst, took it upon himself to go through the results that the whistleblower had presented forth vis-a-vis -vis what was presented by the IBC chairman at the bonus on the IBC portal and compared the two, did a critical analysis of these results and found out that indeed the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition presidential candidate Raila Amolo Odinga and his running mate Martha Wangare Karua won with a margin of over two million votes against the votes that Dr. William Salome Ruto garnered. This is not me saying this. It is what the whistleblower brought forth and what the data analyst uh, put together, compiled, and came up with. Mr. Barnaba Sotieno is that gentleman who went out of his way to do this analysis and came up with the real and factual results as are projected in the summit that they have refused to open to date. Mr. Badama Sotieno has been in some of the fora that Azimio has been addressing to try and educate Kenyans, elucidate to them blow by blow, bit by bit, um, this particular subject. And since it hasn't been so clear out there when he was trying to explain the figures, you know, figures, sometimes figures can be stubborn, but indeed when you understand the figures, you get to know what is in there. And that's why I have invited him to our studios with his laptop and every data that he has so that he can take you through this analysis and explain to you how this election was bungled. Remember, whatever you are doing here is for the knowledge of the general public. We need you to know, but it's not for any anything that we want to achieve as the two of us in this panel. Welcome. Mr. Barnabas, and first of all, tell us how, you know, there, there's, 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 there, there has been this notion that it's you uh, who came up with this particular uh, uh, result that the people say was brought forth by the whistleblower. Are you the whistleblower? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the Director of Communications at Odia. Uh, that is Philip Petale. I appreciate being here and to fellow Kenyans. Uh, my name is Barnabas Utiano. I'm a Kenyan, just like any other Kenyan, with full interest in uh, the affairs of our country. As uh, the elections were taking place, we all had interest in it. And so, this time, I think uh, the IABC was very clear, and they said, uh, we have given you the results. Everybody should add up their results. So I also sat glued on TV, and when I realized different TV stations were giving different results, and there was a lot of confusion, I said, this is possible. Somebody can just sit and work with what the IABC have in their portal, and to come up with some values. And so I did that. And when I did that, I came up with results almost same as what the IBC portal uh, were displaying. So because I was doing it as an individual and without much, uh, uh, not really having a reason to do that, just to know the reality and the truth, um, we kept quiet about it because at the end of it, the presidential candidate that supposedly won was announced. And uh, we had to all keep quiet. Those who are celebrating, celebrating. Those who are making, uh, I mean, not happy. Uh, they were not happy. 
And because I am Azimia from the beginning, I'm actually ODM <laughs> from the beginning, uh, you definitely know where my heart was. My heart was that we lost. And so we could celebrate. So at one point, I decided to walk, come up and say, these are the results. But when I look at them, because I was looking at it polling station by polling station, I noticed that there were some little discrepancies here and there. And it was like, in one station, which could have, I mean, one polling center, which probably is a school, could have like five polling stations. And in that five polling stations, you find that Azimio is leading, and then just in one of them, Azimio is terribly lost, in just one. Then I'm wondering, these are five stations in one uh, center, in which Azimio has won massively in four and lost in one. Now I said here, there are some queries that we need to raise here. So I walked to the party secretariat and I uh, said, let's try to analyze this further. And when I went to the secretariat, it was like, we also have that feeling, but we can't put our fingers on the actual places that things happened. Apparently, I didn't know much about this whistleblower data because I also saw it on TV when the Honorable Jeremy Akioni was uh, announcing that we have a new data set that is showing that Azimio won. But they stuck at only the top tallies. And those top tallies were not easy to decipher and calm down and know this is exactly what happened. So, to some uh, surprise, uh, there was some hidden website somewhere where the whistleblower had put in um, his forms. But a lot of people didn't know about that. So I went to the executive director and he gave me that website link. And then I took all those forms and downloaded. When I checked on them, I realized they were almost exactly the same as the Form 34Bs that were found at Bomas. Everything was basically same features, nothing different. So he said, let me try to go through them again, the way I went through the portal data and extract the, the, the results from there and let's see what comes of it. And so probably that's what we want to look at today. Really, that's basically what it is that we need to check on uh, yeah. if given a chance. Yeah, Mr. Brown, that's before you go into the nitty gritty. Okay. Yes. Show uh, the figures that you have. I yes. want to uh, indulge our viewer. But uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to post and uh, we'll be able to, uh, at intervals, I'll be interjecting uh, Mr. Barnabas to post some of your questions so that he can, he can, he can, he can be on the same page. Go, go, go on and uh, show the figures where yeah. there are discrepancies and how. All so, right. Yes. Yeah, so I may take you directly to the system Let's call it a system for now, because there are some things you cannot do without the help of a computer. And uh, thank God, computers always give us exactly what we want it to give us. And uh, maybe taking you there, I have titled uh, the presentation as 2022 Presidential Election Analysis, as you can see it there. We are comparing two forms, the IEBC server forms, which came later, and also the portal forms, which were there. Everybody uh, had access to the portal forms until at some point when they were withdrawn from the IEBC portal. Uh, this is how it's all arranged. Uh, when you look at the national tally, that is where... Uh, our leader, uh, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Rail Odinga, has been speaking of, I have a value. And the value that he's saying he has is 8.11 million. That is 8,112,244 votes, uh, which gives him a 56.9% when worked out. And uh, Dr. William Ruto has five 
million nine hundred and thirty eight one hundred and sixty votes, which gives him forty one point seven. And a lot of us would ask, where are these figures coming from? I also had that question in me, and uh, everyone else in the party had that same question. And so we decided to go back to where it all began. We have what we call the polling station tallies. That is what matters most. And this is where people talk of what we call the Form 34A. And then we have that tallying into constituency tallies that gives you the Form 34B. So in reality, Form 34A is the start, then Form 34B comes next. So in other words, Form 34B is as official as Form 34A. So as we look at this, we note that the Form 34As are a myriad. There are so many, 46,000 plus of them, that cannot be displayed in any one instance. So it's better to go and look for the consolidated versions, which is the Form 34B. Now, that, we grouped it up into county tallies that came to regional tallies and to national tally. And so our leader does not have time for to go to all these things to the beginning. He can only mention the top value, which gives him this. Um, when we compare that and we look at the vote difference, it turns out that now the leader, who is the, the former prime minister, Raila Molo Odinga, who was the presidential candidate, actually the leading presidential candidate, uh, got a leading of 2,174,084 votes. That is the figure. We always like talking of votes up to the end because these four are not just figures. They are people. So we cannot just say around this number. We must actually say up to the last person. There's a fourth person there involved. So these are human beings that we are looking at here. Don't look at them as figures. And then when we look at uh, the uh, BOMAS results, uh, in our analysis we could raise 46,192, 193 polling stations. We could not access 36 polling stations from the portal. So that gave us a total of 7,146,517 human beings who voted for Ruto and 6,926,844 uh, people who voted for the right now Prime Minister Raila Odinga. Uh, and this is what is ruling Kenya now. But we are looking at it like if this is there and this other value is there, then there must be an issue. This gives us a vote difference of 216 in the BOMAS portal, 730 people that we are told voted more for Ruto than for Raila. I want to take you to some basics because we want to finish this analysis as fast as possible. Let's look at a form like the one of uh, Likoni here, which is from 34B. We have said we cannot access from 34As. And even if you go to the agents that we had in many places, uh, they didn't take it like they took those forms and handed over somewhere and then the forms were like not available. But now we are able to access from 34B. So let's stick to form 34B. When you look at this, this is the BOMAS portal form 34B at the title. Then I take you a little there, and you can see I've made a slight change that takes me now to the, uh, the, the, the server forms that came later on. I want you to check on something here. There is uh, some dot I'm cycling here. You can see that. And then if I come to this, there's a day, again this dot that I am cycling here. You can see it tells you that these forms are exact features, exactly the same. When you look at the titles and the numberings on the forms, they are also exactly the same. Then, when we come to the sign part, the signature part, we have this from the BOMAS that uh, somebody called Vanessa signed here, and also somebody called Christabel also signed for Azimio. So there's a UDA representative and an Azimio representative, 
Then we have the returning officer also signing under an IBC for, uh, uh, stamp. Then we go to this other form. Most of us may not even see that I have made a change. But this other form also is almost the same, not almost, exactly the same features with the stamp and the people in there. So I'll take you to where we got these forms from and you will see the different features in there. Then when we go to the inside of the forms, now uh, with a naked eye, as you can look, you will see that it's almost hard to differentiate between this form and this form. I have two forms here. There is one here that I have highlighted. Then there is another one here which I also highlighted. You can not see much difference if you just check on it and you'll brush it off. And remember there are 291 of them that you're supposed to look at. That is including the diaspora. Now let's go and check on a few differences in these forms. In this form, which comes from the server, later on from the whistleblower, we have a value that I have cycled here. You can see that here, now Raila, now with all due respect, allow me to refer to them by just first names because of this, the time, so that you can uh, get it clear. So here, the Honorable Raila has 270 and the Honorable Ruto has 79. But when we go to this other form, now the Honorable Raila has 170 and the Honorable Ruto has 179 in this same station called Likodep, uh, Station 1 out of the uh, 10 stations in Likodep. Now looking at it clearly, from the first instance, you can see that uh, all these other values remain the same, but this only one changes, and this only changes. So when you go down to the to the totals. Now, from the server, uh, you know, the two uh, gentlemen are doctors, so sometimes I'll be referring to Dr. Raila Molo and Dr. Ruto, sometimes Honorable Ruto and Honorable Raila. So here we have Honorable Raila getting 24,544 votes against uh, Dr. Ruto's 12,808 votes. Okay? But when we go to this other form that was now uh, the official form at the BOMAS, now uh, the Honorable Raila has 24,444. Taking you back, here it is 544, but here now it has become 444. Now, on the other side, Dr. Ruto had 12,808 votes, and now he has 12,908 votes. Now, these were the issues that were arising in so many forms, so, so many, that if we looked at them, you will be surprised at the end result. So, before we continue, are you going to say that uh, uh, the, the figures were being changed, figures belonging to one candidate were being overturned by 100 to favor the other? Yeah, that's what likely it's showing up because if you look at these forms, like here we have 270, and we can assure you that this is as official as this form here with 170. It means that now uh, the Honorable Raila had 270, now he has 170, that means 100 votes have been taken from him. And then now if you look at it here, Honorable Ruto had uh, 79, but now he has 179. That means the 100 has been given directly to him. Checking on it, Professor Wajakoya and, uh, Doc, and David Maure uh, had their values unchanged. This is one three, so that gives us a total of 353 and 353. And with all due respect to the two other candidates, who is uh, Professor Wajakoya and uh, the Honorable Maure, we checked through your data and we noticed that in all the forms there was no variance. No value was taken from you, and no value was added to you at any one point. And this is what the system gave us. So uh, there is no, uh, no problem in this, because we decided that if we don't have variances for Professor Wajakoya and for David Maure, then we don't need to look at their data here. But we respect them as presidential candidates, and uh, please 
uh, accept that we can go on with just the two gentlemen. Now, uh, there's one viewer here who asked a question. Uh, he's called, I think I've lost him. No, no, yeah. Nas Hassan. Nas Hassan says this kind of election problems must one end once and for all. Now, uh, you know, this is a matter of concern to many Kenyans because, you know, what as a new leadership has been trying to say in public and also in uh, private fora is that uh, the election was bungled, presidential election was bungled. And the question is, uh, what is this that was being relayed in Bombers? Isn't it what is supposed to be in the server? Is there a difference between what was in the server or what is in the server and what was being relayed to the public? Uh, in the Bombers, in the IBC portal, like the Bombers of Kenya, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, we have a body mandated to carry out elections, and uh, this is IEBC. They gave us results at the portal, and uh, those results were hurriedly announced. And remember, for those who have forgotten a little bit about uh, how it happens, the Form 34A is from the polling station that informs Form 34B. This is what we see the commissioners reading during the live transmissions. And then we change that to Form 34C and then to Form 34D that is now used to declare the president. When somebody else comes with another set of data that contradicts yours, it is up to you as IEBC to come and either refute that or try to investigate further and say, where are these results coming from? Because now they are in public domain. We have them here. We have given them to the public. And so we have two types of courts in this life. We have the normal courts, and then we have the public court. Now, the public court already has this, and they are trying to assess it. It is up to the IEBC to come and define and say, this is the source of the other form, and probably it is not correct, if they think it is not correct. But they stick to their own portal. But they are still quiet about it, and nothing is being said, and it's like that data is supposed to just float out there, and IBC is mum, so we are not sure. We are not really sure on what IBC is thinking. They, this is the reason why there is this cry of open those servers so that you can own up. Not that people don't know what is inside, People know they only want the IPC to own up. And however much you try to change things in that server, it might not work for you because we have biometrics, we have so many things involved for you to go through the same process again. So uh, this reality of the matter is that we have two sets of results declaring two presidential candidates. And a presidency is not something simple. I want to give you, Banuetale, uh, if you allow, as an, an analogy. We have two types of results that affect the nation. One is the national exams results, and another one is the elections results. Just assume that somebody comes and posts results on the head, head teacher's uh, office, and students come and see their outcome, and they see we have passed, and others see we have failed. And then, a lot happens. In that, they celebration. There are even children who commit suicide because they have failed and they did not expect it. And then assume that two weeks or three weeks down the line, somebody else comes with another set of results and posts at the head teacher's office and say, now these are the other results that have come from NEC. And now all the children who presumably passed had their marks reduced again by 100, and the children who they are uh, presumably failed, had their marks increased by 100 each, and a lot has happened in between. How do you think the nation would take that? They would take it, not in the right way. And in a way, that would be the end of the National Exam Council that day. It would be disbanded, and the person who will take lead in disbanding that National Exam Council would be the president himself. And then investigations would be put in place as to why we have these two sets of results. 
So how come in this one of the national elections, because it affects a presidential candidate and uh, another one is uh, in, in office, people want to downplay it as, it, it as if it is not important. It is as important because it's a five-year uh, process that takes place. So when we're looking at it, we need to look at things with the seriousness that they deserve when these things show up. Now, going back to your figures, uh, what are the regions, or which are the regions that were uh, mostly affected with these uh, kind of changes? Well, thank you. Uh, let me take you directly to what is available. We have analyzed the whole thing uh, with the help of the Secretariat, and uh, we have placed all that data in a website called www.kenyaelectionresults.com. It is highlighted there. And uh, when we pick it up, then we can now take you there and you look at it. Here, it's easy to go through it and understand what happened. We have explained these figures and we don't need to go through them again. Now let me take you to the constituency summaries that will guide us onto the most affected areas that you have asked. Now when we organize the data in constituencies and then into regions and then with final tally, this is the outcome that you see. In Mombasa, a place like Changamwe, Jomvu and Kisauni and Nyali, we did not detect any discrepancy. There was nothing. In other words, the server results and the portal results gave us the same values, and that's why we have variances of zero and zero. Then when we come to Mombasa County, Likoni, we detected that there were some 100 votes taken from uh, the Honorable Raila, and uh, 100 votes added to the Honorable Ruto. And in Vita, we had some 400 votes here taken from uh, the Honorable Raila and 400 votes added to Ruto. That means in the entire Mombasa County, uh, Honorable Raila lost 500 votes and uh, uh, Honorable Ruto gained 500 votes. At some point, we will take you directly to the forms that you can see them, pick them, download them, and check on them and verify and I'm sure you will keep quiet because you cannot dispute the reality. Then now we have uh, Kwale. We had uh, only Kwale, only Msambweni and Kinango affected. Then when we go to uh, Kilifi, uh, when we go to Kilifi, we had only one, stage, one uh, constituency called Magarini that also Right, Honorable Raila lost 100, and, right, and uh, Honorable Ruto gained 100. Uh, Tana River, we had also some losses. Then when we look at the entire coast region, we now note that IEBC portal that is ruling Kenya today has it that the right Honorable Raila got... votes, 6,369 votes, well, up them up so that you own up looking at 49 uh, counties. Let us look at Northeastern. And we note that the IBC results for Northeastern gave uh, the Honorable Raila 352, 431, while 
the Honorable Ruto was given 196 uh, and 38 votes. In this case, uh, Honorable Raila lost 22,000 votes and 22, while the Honorable Ruto gained 21,306 votes in Northeastern. We have looked at the central, at the, at the cost. We note that the Honorable Raila won in cost with minus a few votes deducted from him. And then when it comes to Northeastern, also Honorable Raila won both in the server and also in the, in the portal, uh, in Northeastern. With the deduction of some votes, he still won in both. Then when we come to the Upper Eastern, we take Upper Eastern and Lower Eastern because of various reasons, and we want to differentiate them for you. We note that here, with a few shenanigans that took place in there, we had uh, Upper Eastern, uh, Andre Boraila, IBC gave him 149,000 votes, 613 while the Honorable Ruto was given 731,415. That means the Upper Eastern people, uh, Honorable Ruto won. But in the servers, we note that instead of 149, uh, Honorable Raila got 232, 827, and uh, Honorable Ruto got 648,000. So in this case, he was denied a total of 83,000 votes, 214, while Dr. Ruto was given... 83,314 votes. You may think these are hot air, as they keep saying, but we have forms and data never lie. We don't have this uh, fished from nowhere. And anybody should come and tell us uh, the source of these forms if they think they know a better source than IEBC itself. Uh, we have Lower Eastern region. In Lower Eastern, where it's basically Machakos, Kitui, Makwani counties, we have the IBC server forms giving us that Honorable Raila got 769,422, while Honorable Ruto got 250, 157. Again, he won with a high margin, very high margin. But we are looking at it from the servers. We still have it that he got 77822. And Honorable Ruto got 242,052. That means 1,400 votes were deducted in the entire region of the Lower Eastern from uh, uh, Zimio and given to uh, the UDA candidate, which is 5,100 votes added to him. Again, looking at it in the Lower Eastern, now Honorable Raila has won, even from the portal and from the servers themselves. He has won in both. Then we come to coast, uh, to central region. In central region, we detected a lot of things that happened, which we may need to look at critically, one by one, maybe after taking you through this. In IBC, they gave uh, the Honorable Raila 423,000 votes. That is in the entire central region, starting from Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Kirinyaga, Muranga, Kiambu, all of that, they want to say that only 423,000 people voted for uh, the Honorable Raila and 1.6 million people voted for the Honorable Ruto. Now, when the server results came, this one from the servers, and added their values, we noted that the Honorable Raila had 1 million and 27,989 votes, while the Honorable Ruto had 1,016,156 uh, I mean, uh, votes. When we look at central province, and we know the dynamics of central, and we know at that particular time we had a sitting president uh, campaigning, on behalf of the Right Honorable Raila. Not that he can't penetrate Central by himself, <laughs> because I don't think there's anybody who does not know the Right Honorable Prime Minister that he was going to win. A 50-50 sharing is uh, highly possible in Central region. And this is what the server is giving us. The server is actually giving us 50-50 sharing between the Honorable Ruto and the Honorable 
uh, Raila. We know that's basically that the central people uh, really voted not really for personalities. They vote for ideologies. And here we had the president floating an ideology that this you are safer in the hands of the right Honorable Raila. And Honorable Ruto was also floating an ideology that you're going to get free money, what we call the Hustler Fund and so on. So probably this divided the votes in between this. And the servers are now telling us the reality and the truth that there are those who listened to the, His Excellency the President and there are those who listened to the ideology of Honorable Ruto of free money that was voted for. And so we have to stick to Central a little and figure out what really happened. But we have the results out here. All these highlights show us that uh, there are lots of changes that took place that Dr. Ruto was given some values and, doc and uh, Dr. Raila was also denied some values which we will take you through. After that, we can now take you to Rift Valley, the entire Rift Valley uh, region, which we did not divide into two because we knew that a presidential candidate was coming from Rift Valley. So we didn't have to look at North Rift and South Rift. We decided to put it all together so that we understand the behavior of the Rift Valley in the elections. Apparently, we are surprised that IEBC gave the Honorable Prime Minister 1.1 million votes from Rift Valley against Dr. Ruto's 2.666 million votes. And uh, comparing that with Central, we thought <laughs> that probably in the Rift Valley is where he should have even gotten some hundreds of votes only. But he still managed to be given from the portal 1.1 million. Again, when we look at the discrepancies of the things that uh, happened, now we have 1.4 given to the Right Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Raila Amolo Dinga, against Dr. Ruto's 2.3 million votes. Here, he ended up losing 336,000 votes and Ruto gaining 246,000 votes. If you look at it, this is really, really tenable because Rift Valley at some point was uh, the bedrock of ODM. And there are people still there who are in ODM, and we knew very well at that time. We could even see resignations happening in the last minute of people transferring from UDA coming to ODM. I mean, there were uh, the, even the officials of UDA resigned last minute. So in other words, there was high chances that the Prime Minister was going to get massive votes in Rift Valley. Apparently, the portal tells us it's 1.1, the server tells us it's 1.4. That is why we need to trust what the server is also telling us, and we need the IPC to come up and own up and say that this data set is from them. Last, not lastly, but we have the Western region, which is, uh, for those who may want to know, it includes Kakamega, Vihiga, Bungoma, and Busia. There are four counties. Uh, in this case, the IBC gave the Prime Minister 849,000 votes and uh, uh, Honorable Ruto was given 513,000 votes. Here again, he won. So looking at all those regions, we have only seen two regions where the uh, three regions, I should say, including the Upper Eastern, that uh, Ruto won, and the others, uh, Raila has been winning. Then when we look at the value at the, the, the server, we now have 892,000 votes against 466,000 votes. That means in Western, again, uh, Raila was denied 47,000 votes, and Ruto was added 46, uh, close to 47,000 votes. So in other words, what you take is what you give on the other side. Then when we come to Nyanza region, that includes Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Migori, Kisi, and Nyamira. We also have it that uh, the IBC portal that was announced at, this, at the Bomas 
gave okay. Raila 1.87 million in Nyanza and Ruto had only 283 according to the official results. But when you look at the servers, we have 1,898,000 for uh, Raila and uh, 261 for Ruto, 1,000 votes. Here in Nyanza, entire Nyanza, they didn't do much. Whoever was trying to do this math only took 20,000 votes from Raila and gave 22,000 votes to Ruto. Then lastly, we have Nairobi, which is basically a region on its own because of the cosmopolitan nature. Uh, we have it that uh, Ruto was given 757, no, Raila was given 757,000 votes while Ruto was given 535,000 votes. Uh, again in Nairobi, Raila won with a higher margin, but looking at the server results, it turns out that he had 822,000 votes against Ruto's 470,000 votes. Again, he won massively in both the portal and in the server with a very wide margin. But in that, as they were doing that, they raised 65,000 uh, against Raila and uh, given towards Ruto against 65,000 votes. The reason why we don't have diaspora uh, discrepancies is that we were not able to access the server results from the diaspora. So those who are asking where has been uh, the 8.1 million and 5.9 million votes coming from, you can see the addition here. That when we add all the votes, uh, the server results indicate that all these totals, which you can do by yourself, you have it over there, uh, 8.11224 million votes against Dr. Ruto's 5.938160 million votes in the server. It is clear there and you can see the figures how they came up. We will take you to the polling station so that you can see a few. This means that uh, the right honorable minister lost 100 one no one million one hundred and eighty two thousand four hundred votes and the Ruto gained one million two hundred and eight four hundred and fourteen votes from nowhere. These are votes that is given to you by computer. It's taken this side and added. And in that case now he had seven million votes uh, point one against 6.9 million for Raila, giving the difference of 216,000 votes that was there. So uh, in a nutshell, I've given you regionally, because it's easier to understand, the whole data is there, but regionally it's much easier to understand because it's shorter. Well, uh, I've been going through the comments on the live stream, and uh, there's mixed reaction. There are those who support the current, uh, or rather, Honorable Ruto, and those who support uh, the Honorable Raila. But you know, uh, it's always uh, a forum where people just spew anything they want to say. And I've been going through the comments, and some believe that what you're saying is the truth, but nothing but the truth. And indeed, I believe uh, uh, one, one asked, how authentic is this? Uh, data that you're trying to show us. Number two, uh, there are those who are telling the Azimio adherents to just accept and move on. And you know, one thing I want to remind them is that, uh, you know, as uh, Dr. Nelson Mandela, the late Nelson Holisosa Mandela said, it's always, it always seems impossible until it's done. Now, Barnabas, going to the question that uh, one of the viewers has asked here, how authentic is this data and is it verifiable? Right. Thank you very much. I want to answer that because we cannot give such a magnitude of information uh, if we cannot verify it. It affects the nation. 
in one way or the other, I'm sure it's live, and we know social media today uh, is accessible world over. So this is not just about Kenyans. It's about friends of Kenya. It's about Kenyans in the diaspora. It's about everybody else. So we cannot come up with things that cannot be verified. In that same website, if you look at it, I want to take you through it. We have indicated here that this comparative results from IBC server forms 34B and BOMAS portal forms 34B for the 2022 presidential elections. So that means we have sources we took them from. We took them from the IEBC themselves. That's why we authoritatively write here IEBC forms. They can take us to court if they think these are not their forms. They can choose to do that. Yeah. Then the variation of the original form 34B can be downloaded from the given links below for every constituency. The final analysis calculates the following results. We have indicated here. This has been explained. From here, you can now view, we have two, three columns here. We have three columns that you can interact with. One is just showing you the county, the constituency, and then now you can download the server form, what came from the servers later on, and the original BOMAS forms that was originally at the BOMAS. Even IBC know that with this BOMAS portal forms is what they gave people, and they say, the results are there. I quote Chebukati saying one point that if you can't add those things by yourself, then you are to blame. They are there, pick your calculators and add the results. So we have placed them there for you to, so, to, to see that they were there, even though they pulled them down later on. And I remember at one point when Chebukati was asked, he cited the cost of maintaining them in their servers, and that's why they could not keep them there. Otherwise, he didn't have any other reason why he pulled them down. So we have put them there for you to verify because we are the complainants. And when we are complainants, we must give all the evidence that we have. So let's take you to a case like Likoni here. This is Mombasa Likoni. I hope you are following those who can follow with me. Uh, the server form for Likoni is this one. Let's download it. There it is. We have downloaded it. This is a form 34B from the server. And you can see it is all the features of form 34B as brought to us by IEBC. No one can have access to this uh, watermarked papers from IBC and the barcodes and the logos and everything else and still be confident enough to display to the public if you are cooking this. You can't. The IBC portal form here. This is how we say talk of verifiability now. Let's verify these two forms together for those who are following. Yeah, so just to rotate and uh, see the values here, you can see that this form and this form, they have the same features everywhere. You can do that by yourself later when you can remember the link, which is kenyaelectionresults.com. When we come to the station of contention, which was this one, Likodep, you can see it here. Now, in the server form, in which you, we clicked there, the, the, you can see that uh, Ron Reboraila has 270 here and 79 for uh, Andre Boruto. But when we come to the other Likoni form and we go to Likodep, the same one, this is now the verifying these things. Here, now it is 170 and 179. If you look at this data, how it is, there is no editing, nothing. You can't see anything. So this means the, the sources, the original sources, are the ones that gave us both results. The 170 and 179, and here they gave us 270 and 279 for the same station here. Look, this is uh, Likodep 01. We have 270. And we have 79. 
while on the on this one we have 170 and we have 179 so we have simplified the whole thing for you instead of going through all those forms and checking what is inside because you may not be able to tell we have put a column called the process comparison results here we have the view so let's view what happened in Likoni you can see the results are much clear and again with due respect to Honorable Wajakoya and Honorable Mwaure, we have omitted your results because there were no discrepancies. Even here, we noticed that there was no much discrepancy until we came to only one point here, that we have 270.79, then it changes to 170.79. The two columns on this other end are the BOMAS portal, and on these first uh, lines are the the server portals, the one that uh, we have been saying open the servers. These are just the station streams and these are the stations themselves. So if you're going through this, you will see the station, the station stream, the votes ob obtained by Honorable Raila in the server, votes obtained by Honorable Ruto in the server, votes given to Honorable Raila in the IBC portal, and votes given to Honorable Ruto in the IBC portal. We say given because from the look of things, you can even tell from here that look at the flow of this data here and then suddenly we have a 179 popping up when the whole values were just hundreds. It can tell you that there was some giving, give and take happening here. So we see a hundred and a hundred and we can confirm from these two forms. So we are not here to just cook figures and give you because we know the repercussion of doing that, especially to a nation as peaceful as Kenya. Well, Mr. Barnabas has uh, made it clear that uh, these forms were downloaded from uh, uh, the IBC and indeed he has challenged the IBC to come forth and uh, prove that whatever he's trying to tell the public with this data is not authentic. The IBC has not done anything about this. They haven't denied or confirmed that what is contained in this data is indeed what is e it is in the, in the in the servers of the IBC. And uh, uh, another comment that I want to quote, and I believe uh, uh, as I quoted here, it's a it's a comment from one Chariot Korir who says of what is being done here on this live stream that these are the so-called educated fools. Indeed, it's never easy to be a fool, but it's always important to know that someone is a fool when you know you are not a fool. And uh, I want to quote uh, Clarence Thomas, who said, good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. So Mr. Chiriot, Arab career, uh, you may learn from uh, Clarence Thomas, that good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. Well, as you wind up the show, I just want to say that indeed uh, uh, the information that uh, has been shared on this show is uh, what is contained on both the report that was uh, brought forth to the Azimio leadership by the whistleblower who works in the IBC, and also what was displayed at the Bombers of Kenya portal. And uh, quoting the evening chapters of the book by the former chief agent of the uh, Azimiola Omoja presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Saitabao Ole Kanchori, who said that uh, all through at the Bombers of Kenya, when the results were being streamed live, on the portal, Honorable Bailo Dinga was always ahead with over 50% of the votes cast that had been uh, uh, projected on the, on the portal. Until that time when the IBC chair decided that the streaming of the results on the portal should stop, public display of the results should stop, and it, indeed it stopped uh, with his word because being the uh, the presidential uh, uh, returning officer, 
he said he had the powers to make any decisions that he deemed was or were fit at that particular time. So uh, Mr. Cantoris goes ahead to say that indeed the, the, the whole process was mismanaged by uh, Mr. Wafula Chebukati. Uh, the whole process of uh, uh, streaming of results from polling stations into the Bomas uh, auditorium was mismanaged by Mr. Wafula Chebukati. And uh, I haven't seen anywhere Mr. Chebukati coming to uh, refute uh, this particular uh, claim that uh, Mr. Setaba Ole Kanchori has quoted in his book Why Royla Odinga is not the fifth. Now, another thing that uh, perhaps Kenya should know is that whatever is being presented uh, in this live stream and has been presented in other forums that uh, the Azimio Mojo and Kenya Coalition leadership has been attending, the first one was at uh, uh, Ufungamano, uh, Ufungamano House in, uh, uh, along Mamlaka Road at the University of Nairobi where Mr. Barnabas presented it to a pensive audience that had time to look at the figures and understood what was happening. Then the second one was at the public, uh, the, the town hall meeting uh, last week on Thursday at uh, uh, the Moranga SEK uh, Diocese Mothers Union Hall where he also did the same to the audience that had uh, turned out for the meeting that was addressed by the principles of Azimela Omoja, one Kenya coalition led by Honorable Baila Amolo Odinga. This is what is contained in the server and the portal at the IBC as was displayed. And uh, it's now uh, the onus is on the IBC to come forward and say, indeed, what you are doing is not correct. The figures you are presenting to the public are not right. They have not done so. And Mr. Bardamas not once, not twice, has challenged the IBC to come and say, indeed, this is not, uh, these are not our figures. They haven't done anything. Being mm -hmm. considerate of others will take your children further in life than any college degree, Mariam Wright Elderman said. So whatever you do with this information is up to you. Take it, leave it. But indeed, it's just for Kenya to know what happened. Someone asked in the comments, what next? It is not us to decide what next. Neither it is you to decide what next. But what we need to do as a people who love our country, who want this generation and the generations to come, the, our lives, our future, and the future of our children's children to be good and under good governance, in, uh, in an open, transparent, and uh, uh, a fair uh, system of election, we need to fix what is used to deprive others of their victory and reward others who have it. I mean, those who have the means, you know what I mean, of that victory. So basically, this show was just to show you exactly what Mr. Bardamas has been trying to, to explain to us after going through the, 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 the data and analyzing critically so that you can understand. Mr. Bardamas, your parting shot, what do you think should be done going forward? Yes, I have a few concerns that I can also highlight directly to you. Mm -hmm as you can uh, look at it from the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is, uh, what are the sources of the different sets of Form 34B? Mm -hmm. The work of anybody who wants to check on data is to get uh, the originals and process, and the computer gives you out the results. So the sources is what matters. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, we know that the portal comes from the IEBC. And the other source also is coming from IBC because we are told the whistleblower got it from IBC. Mm -hmm. So ask ourselves, what are the sources of the different sets of Form 34B mm -hmm. that are bringing the controversies in Kenya today? Mm -hmm. And we can authoritatively say it is IEBC. 
Then who is responsible for the different figures in the two sets of the form 34B? It is not us. Ours is to take the two sets of, of forms and compare the results and get the outcome. Then we note that who created those figures differently like that? It's only IBC that can answer that question. Mm -hmm. Then why the consistencies in the different forms? You know, if it was just something that somebody was doing a hazard, we could have seen some places it's 100 votes taken, some places it is 20 votes, some places it's this much. But we note that the consistency is that what is taken from the Prime Minister Raila Odinga is what is given to Ruth directly, just like that. To show that there was a planned consistency in this to happen, and who could be responsible for this? It is an IBC plus some anonymous face that only them can be able to explain. Uh, lastly, I have that indicated drawing there. We have peace, humanity, and justice. Many times we pursue peace at the expense of justice. And you see what happens, everybody shouts and the police are on the roads and they're trying to tell people, maintain peace. All we need to do is just to pursue the justice part of it. Then peace will pursue us. It is all clear that if you pursue justice, peace pursues us. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we also have humanity, the truth and the law. Mm -hmm. Many times we want the law to pursue humanity at the expense of the truth. But the reality is that we should pursue the truth and the law will be a faithful observer in what's going on in our lives. So these two things is what is causing problems in Kenya today. Apparently, when I look at the social media, when we want to be rational and try to bring things in the rational way, you meet it with sorts of insult, accept and move on, this, this and that, Mlishindwa, what, what. That is what you meet. But again, if we speak of going to the streets, then you start wondering, why are you telling people again, don't go there? So in other words, we need to be keen. We need to know that we have two things that we must always pursue. Justice, and we must also pursue truth. Sure. Then we will have all the peace that we need in our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir Winston Churchill, one of the most celebrated statesmen in the UK, and the former British Prime Minister, once said, all the great things are simple and many can be expressed in a single word. Freedom, justice, honor, duty, mercy, and hope. Hope is what gives people, what keeps people going. It is hope that what makes us go. Mm -hmm. Keep hoping. Let's get there. Let's fix our country. Thank you to the production crew. Everyone was involved. My guest here, Mr. Barna Mazotiano, thank you for uh, agreeing to come to the show and share with us uh, the data that you have analyzed so that Kenyans can understand. But I just want to tell you, it is you who will make Kenya move forward by the resolve to have some things changed. Change begins with you. Change begins with me. Let us join hands and fix our country so that we can have a better future. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you.